Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I am going to show you how to paint these adorable birds and these beautiful blooms. This is part of Acrylic April, a 30 painting art challenge. To help me bring this to you is my husband, John. Hello. He makes sure that when I'm teaching you how to do this painting step by step, that he's pointing the camera at what I'm demonstrating and talking about. If I'm demonstrating a technique, you can see it. If I'm mixing a color, you can see it. You'll understand my tools, my process, my reason. I really try to break it down. I also have traceables and written out instructions, uh, really since 2021, called mini books um, that you can download. You could come and just do this one painting if you just like these two birds, but I highly encourage you to take part of the 30 painting challenge because I think it's going to give you so much. But whatever brings you here, I am happy to have you here. Be sure and hit the subscribe button. Bring your brushes, get your paint, come back and meet me at the easel right now because I honestly am going to show you out at home how to paint this. Let's go. So we're back with another 8x8 eight eight surface as we've been doing all April. Almost like the end here, John. Yeah. Can I believe we're coming up on day 29? Uh, so you know where the paint is on the palette. Cad Red, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Burnt Sienna, Cad Yellow Medium, Mars Black, and Titanium White. Once again, stained with a little bit of Quinacridone uh, Magenta, but that's just a me thing. That's not a you thing that just got on my white paint. So on this 8x8 surface, I have a very important wish or intention. Um, and I'm kind of like circled around this, but I'm just going to say it because I really want this for everyone. This is uh, Suicide uh, Prevention Awareness Month. And my wish is that if you need help, you reach out for help and that that's okay. This is, these aren't medical uh, problems and you deserve uh, real uh, important intervention if you need help. So reach out, reach out to friends, reach out to family. Um, if you see somebody that you think is in trouble, don't hesitate to ask because um, it's so preventable when caught early. We talk about breast cancer and, you know, other illnesses, talking about prevention through catching early. Suicide is one of those things that if we catch it early and we get help early and we help others early, it's completely preventable. So that is my wish. Yes. Good wish. It's a big wish. I know I dropped a big one. I'm going to paint the background. Now, today's background, I'm going to get a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my titanium white and kind of begin here I think with the ultramarine blue and titanium white and I'm doing ultramarine blue today because I want to do a really vibrant kind of turquoise on the birds yeah so when I have a blue on blue kind of environment going on um I'm just making my watercolor go away. I like to start with an ultramarine blue or thalo blue, depending on which one I'm going with, and then go the other way, mm. right? So ultramarine blue background, thalo blue focal, thalo blue background, ultramarine blue focal. It's a trick I have. Ooh, this is going to be messy on the time lapse. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to be like, what is, what is this? It paints so messy. Maybe I've got to start thinking about the, the one minute video too. <laughs> Meh. Next year. Next year. All right. So in the beginning, I just want this layer. We're going to kind of put some maybe distant leaves and some distant stuff back there. But I want this first layer down. And I want it dry. You want it dry. Let's dry it together. We can do this. Let's dry the canvas. So in this layer, I'm going to kind of imply the distant out of focus bokeh effect without sponges of the sky. I'm going to begin with really light blue, white, and ultramarine blue. And I'll come up here and just kind of indirectly, you know, brush that around. We've done that a few times, right? Mm. Where we kind of diffuse the eye with brush directionality. Oh, I'm so, like, I want to keep paints and flowers. I don't think I'm ready to be done when we're done. Yeah, no, I get you. I, I just don't think I'm there yet. I'm not ready to be done, man. 
just have I have like 30 flower paintings that I absolutely wanted to do that I didn't get to do this month. <laughs> More flowers <laughs> needed. So many. so many. So many flowers. So many flowers and beaches and, you know, there's just so much stuff I want to paint. A lot of times it's hard. So I'm just doing the blue and white again up here, creating a second coat. Now, I want you to get just the softest little hint going here. I've got a little bit of it on my corner, and that's what was happening to me there. But that's how I handled it. You handled it? I did. I handled it. So handled. So handled. So we're just talking about maybe some distant little pink flowers. That flower looked over and said, man, you handled that. I did. It was super impressed with my uh, maturity. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Now that you've handled that. Maybe a little darker on this one. So I'm just creating a little more interest in the background, but I still need to keep it light enough that the birds and the branch have deep contrast. Ooh. Deep contrast. Deep contrast. Like supernatural contrast? Yes, like Sam and Dean would be like, Castilla, how much contrast is there? Uh, I teach painting, but also make TV jokes. So that's the price of free art lessons. <laughs> Listening to my weird jokes and me talk. I've been trying to tell YouTube this for years. The pr uh, price of fee art, free art lessons with me is uh, TV jokes and listening to me talk. And continue on here, just making sure that that's light. Mm -hmm. And then when I have that and it's still wet, right, I could get another little bit of pink. Quite light, though. Yeah. Because these are, these are far away. We know they're there. Almost like an abstracted background. I wonder how everybody, I, like right now, today as I'm painting this, the rainbow has just dropped. The rainbow abstract flower. That was a good one. It was a good one, but I'm worried about y'all because I haven't seen the group yet. <laughs> like, how are they doing? I don't know. I'll have to find out. I'm going to rinse out very thoroughly. And I'm going to take a little of my green over towards where my yellow is and make some just, look at that sh chartreuse green with a, a little bit of white in it. So these are like little pops of green and yellow. Sometimes you'll see me wipe off my brush on the paper and towel, and it's because I felt like I overloaded. Mm. The load was too great. The load was too great, and I just had to do something about that. I like to imply some maybe leaves back here. But you can see I'm keeping it very light. I like it. It's very contrasty because of the colors. Like this, Yeah, this is one that's by hue, not by value. Okay. I think that's a nice little random background for our two little adorable birds to be on. Go ahead and dry this thoroughly. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to sketch in the birds and branch. So I'm going to put a little branch here to start out with. And that's just because I need to know how much room my birds have. I want to leave room for a tail, right? And room for heads and bodies. So I'm going to come up here. This is about four fingers on the left hand side and I'm making a black line with my number four round by Simply Simmons and the reason I'm doing that is that I like to have a deep value on branches to start from just makes life easier on me so we've got this flowering branch I think these are apple blossoms 
And I believe that these are thrushes, some type of orange-bellied thrush. Um, however, I'm not a thousand percent sure. So the internet has been so helpful with this information lately. I hope you guys know and can tell me. I know nothing of the thrush. You know nothing of the thrush? And I think I'm going to start with a little white. And I'll come here and say, all right, I've got a bird I want to have here and another bird that I want to have here. And I'll begin with the bird on the left. And let's say our body is, hmm. Again, about four fingers and a and a little egg round. I like to start my birds with like a little bit of an egg round. And that is because they do often have a bit of an egg shape going on. Now, I'm going to go right through the black just to kind of give myself an idea of how long I want my tail to be. But I won't get into it too much. And I know I'm going to put it here. It's just that tail length sometimes tells you what kind of bird you have. Yeah. Now the head here, I'm going to put the head up here in a little circle. I do a lot of weird little circles to get my birds in. We do a lot of birds. Yeah. And I have found birds love the circle. They do. Now I don't really need to get the beak in too much other than um, beak size and directionality. And this beak will point up a little bit. Guess where I got the idea for this? Where? Um, and, I, and, you know, I'm changing it up and have a license, but uh, from the music channels. Uh, sometimes the music channels have the best, the ones that just play live music 24 hours. Oh, we even try yeah. to do that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they're the best thumbnails. And I, and uh, it, a minute ago, I saw this one go, uh, like one that was that I'm basing this off of. And they all had it. Like everybody had it. And I was like, man, that must be a great thumbnail. The birds. So I was like, I'm going to do a painting based on that because obviously it speaks to people. And so now I am. You're doing something to do, uh, inspired. Inspired is, is a more accurate. It, like, I don't know. Like, you might not necessarily even connect them, but I know as an artist where my inspiration came from. So that's sort of the difference between uh, inspiration and, um, you know, uh, replication is that inspiration is like, I know I got the idea from here, but it's changed and tweaked and becomes my own original thought. I'm going to come in and just sort of make a round circle again. These are very awkward circles, I know. Birds are made of awkward circles. If you're using the traceable, you have none of these, none of these challenges. Position of the beak just lets me know where the head is, and that's why sometimes I kind of uh, put it in. I want just a little more belly here, and I will come back with the tail just a little bit, about the same length as the other one. So, believe it or not, that hot mess is how I plan my birds. If you use the traceable, you'll have a lot more lines and information to work from. Um, but for painting, this is about where I like to get started from. So let's dry this and we come back, we'll begin painting in our birds. We're actually gonna do them and, well, no, the branch and then the birds is what it's gonna go. Branch and then birds. So let's work on our branch a little bit. There's a little more branch information I may wanna add. So I'm gonna take my number four round and load it with a little bit of black paint and maybe create a little joint, a little branch coming off here. Like you might have to sort of imply maybe some downward flowers. And then I may also want to come over here and leave room for perhaps the flowers that are up top. So just so we have a little flower balance, right? Mm -hmm. When I have that, I can come in and uh, take a little of my black and brown. <laughs> the noise of that dog's feet. <laughs> click, 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 click. I'm gonna come along here and just start to brown up some of the branch. It's okay if I go over the tail. I'm trying to make a continuity here anyways. You want to get a little of your yellow and your brown. <laughs> I 
and come across here and begin to highlight. I don't think you can hear from the mic what's going on, but it's very <laughs> funny under my feet. There's dog play afoot. There is dog play afoot. Dogs will play. Afoot. I'm going to bring that light color again, which is the cad yellow, the burnt sienna. There was a little Mars black already on my brush. Now I'll want that to dry before I do any more on it. So let's go ahead and dry it and come back and hit the next thing. So I'm going to continue on um, before I get to my next part of the branch. I'm going to just rough in some of the birds. I'm going to take a little of my yellow over to my red and I'm going to make some orange. Might even get some of that kind of branch color in it to like dim it a bit. I'm using a filbert. This is a number eight filbert. I'm going to go ahead and just start to paint in my birds a little. Huh? Now, when I come to the back of this, I will definitely kind of flick back because little bird butt feathers are a little fluffier. <laughs> Maybe not always, but on all the birds I've painted so far. I always like to make sure there's a good ample belly. And the orange comes back a bit like that. Maybe I'm going to get a little more orange on here. All right, and come in and, and highlight it some. Mm. This like bird it. is so much oranger than the other bird. And I'm going to guess this cutie pie here is the female. Uh -huh. So her orange is going to come more up into her eye. And I'm going to bring this back again, a little stronger this time. Just the start of something, right? We're starting it. I'm going to rinse out my filbert and put it to the side for just a second. And I'll go ahead and actually switch to my number one monogram liner because at this moment, I do want a little control. I'm going to load up with some brown and black on the number one monogram liner. And I'm going to give myself the first leg. And that foot is going to come wrap around the branch. Right, and then there's going to be another little leg. Because that's what they do. They grippy grip. Hmm. We also have some leg. So this one is going to come forward into some flowers that are going to be right there. So I've just got to put it out far enough to go. I'm going to rinse this out. And while I'm here, I'm going to grab some of my orange. I'm going to just make sure that we have that little sort of elbow pocket of feathers that comes down on a leg. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Can always come and get a little of my brown and white. Just highlight this a little bit. That's not bad. Well, I've got my monogram liner on. I'm also going to come in here and make sure I got me a little beak. All beaks have kind of a curve or shape. It's, oh, this isn't one. This is a number four monogram. Sorry. This is a number four. All the brushes have different numbers on them. And so that's one of the things you have to kind of get used to. 
Might as well come in here and kind of put in a little eye now. For her little beacon. Right back here into the head. Just come kind of in the line from the beak and back to the head. It's pretty small. Not a big thing. Go ahead and get a little white on here and and add another little layer of highlight. All right. That is a lot of weirdness to take in, but it is where you have to get. And when we come back, we're going to add some blue. I'm going to work my phthalo blue as the blue on the bird. I'm going to actually get him a little bit of the ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and a smidge of my quin to get the deepest color. I'm going to come here on my right bird and below the orange marking, I'm going to pull a wing. I'm on the edge of my brush and I will take this straight back and off the back here. Now, the other wing curls in this way. That's how we're going to get the tuck. And we definitely have a tail off the back end. I'm going to still using my filbert. Nice little tuck there. And I may switch to a round for uh, around the head just to have uh, some more control. So I'll come over here and do the bird on the right. I'll let John reset us here. Left. Left. Thank you. <laughs> Confusing John thoroughly. I know what you mean. I've been here a minute. The other bird. The other bird pulling down a little tail. And again, little wing. It's just the start of something blue. I love painting birds. I could just paint birds and flowers like forever. Mm -hmm. I think that's the pretty good things to, to paint. They're just a pleasant topic to me. As a thing I didn't know I loved to paint before I got on YouTube. I yeah. love to paint birds and flowers. A little ultramarine and phthalo blue. Let's come with our number four round. here and kind of even a more and it's almost like a it's an interesting kind of jaunty little wing back over to the one that's on the right that I'm now sure is on the right look at us go we now have the basic underpainting of the bird in that's how you get them built in. Let's try this and then we're gonna like zhuzh it up. So I'm gonna start with the bird on the right and I've got my round hog brush and I'm going to get it a little bit damp. I'm gonna get my blue and a little of my brown into it and some white. And then maybe even a little more brown. There we go. Kind of a grayed out color. And I'm going to come under the eye. 
just right now into the back. I'm going to do just enough feather painting around him so that when I do the detail of the eye next, which is what I'm actually doing, um, he reads really, really well. All right, so I'm going to rinse that out. And that's also while we're here, get uh, kind of good under the beak. Because if I do the eye and the beak and the eye and the beak of the other bird, and then we paint the other birds in, you'll really believe we're painting birds. If I make you all wait too long, maybe you won't think you're really painting birds. <laughs> I'm going to add a lot more yellow to the orange paint. And then come in with more red. And so that's just better on that. Let's go over to the other bird now. And just we're just making sure we have this extra coat. This isn't the finished part of it. It's just we're getting that extra coat. Maybe a little more yellow. And in this case, some white. And come above the beak with a little bit of orange. Then maybe even up over the eye. And then a little more orange to the back. And then maybe even a little bit of the blue and brown here. And I painted out some of the eye. It doesn't bother me at all. That's not my worry. All right. Dry that. And now we have enough underneath there that when I come back and do the beak and eye, um, I won't have to go back and very meticulously paint feathers in, <laughs> which you'll thank me for later. And back to my number four liner. I'm going to get a little bit wet. I'm also going to put out a little bit of the fluid acrylic that I have. That is a uh, softer body than the heavy body. I'm using the golden fluid acrylic. Um, that's just what I like. You could use craft paint. You could just thin your heavy body paint with water. Come here and I'm going to add a little white to my orange. Maybe even a little yellow to that. I'm making this apricot color. Come around here and kind of paint that around his eye. I'm also going to take a little bit of that and come back. So I'm on that top beak. Let's get a little black and brown together. And I'm going to come up over the top of the beak. I'm going to trim that in, that little line that we had there. And bring that back a bit. And this is going to be my dance. Maybe come in and add a little bit to the nose so that you just kind of see the highlight in the beak. Just getting that going there. A little brown. Tap a little of this up to the eye. That's not bad. All right, we're doing good. Now I'm going to take some black and come on in. I like it. Paint in a little bird eye. <laughs> Make a little blue-gray using my ultramarine blue with my black already on the brush. Come here and make a blue-gray reflection into that eye.
And I'm also going to come here and take a little of my blue and my fluid white. Like you do, right? Maybe get a little of that quinacridone into it. Like you do. Like I do, like somebody does. It gives me kind of like a violet. Come over what I painted here and make little kind of short bird feathery marks. Right over the front of the nose there. Oh, I love doing birds. I love it, John. I love it so much. I'm going to get some of my orange. I hear you. I'm going to come in and uh, tap some of those little orange feathers into my blue. Because I love it so much. Love it so much. I'm going to get some of my blue. My phthalo blue and titanium white. I'm going to tap back some of that. <gasps> I know. It's so cool. It's so cool. I'm going to come up here on the top of the head. And add a little white and phthalo, and phthalo blue. Let us go. I think it's kind of just gorgeous and amazing. Very pretty bird. Now that that is all dry, we'll come back into the eye. Now a little bit of a light reflection. Maybe along the beak and a little bit on the inside. All right, that's one bird. One. One. But there can be more than one. There's not only one. <laughs> So even though I'm going to paint these birds a little bit looser, I like to get kind of involved in their little faces because that's where their personality comes into play. And uh, that's what you see me doing here. I'm going to continue on with my monogram liner. Predictably, get my light beige colors going. I'm adding yellow and white. I'm going to sort of paint in the outer rim of the eye that kind of got painted away. We saw that happen. We lost a little of that. I'm going to make sure that the top of this area where the beak is is a little bit light. Now maybe it's more into the orange and coral. I'm just tapping that in. You can see I just worked that around, right? I'm going to add some light here. And maybe kind of back here with a little of these pin feathers, light pin feathers. See that? Yeah. It's just really fun. Just, oh, so cute. Is bird is cute. Let me go ahead and come in on this beak and say, comes back like into the feathers a little bit. A little bit there. Back a bit. And we, we still will want some orange in there like we had in the other one. And that kind of creates a subtle little difference between the top beak and the bottom beak, doesn't it? A little orange shading there. You can always yeah. go back into the dark. You know, and dance it back and forth. Man, a little brighter orange. You know, and I'm even going to do a little orange brown back here. 
So she's different. Just different feathers. And that's why sometimes it's fun to paint a bird species where you have both the male and the female of the bird on the same painting. Because they look a little different? Because they look a little different. Not always, but often, but not always. So uh, don't assume. <laughs> uh, I've definitely, like ducks was one where I did a bunch of deep dives on ducks and I'm like, okay, bird assumptions and ducks do not go together. You know, I just was, I was surprised. I was getting kind of excited about that duck stamp competition that goes on. I might kind of knock his little white back. And so, you know, I'm going to give her just, just a titch of a high reflection right here. And then right there. Oh my goodness, guys, we just did their faces. That's all we have to do. Like, that's the big thing. Wow. That turned out nice. It does, doesn't it? It turns out nice. Nice. Yeah. So expect ducks too because i gotta practice my duck painting because i do want to enter in the duck stamp because i support ecology and wildlife it's weird that supporting a hunting stamp does that yeah. but it does if you didn't know that the fish and wildlife duck stamp supports habitats for wildlife hmm. i did not know that i've been learning things all week that i did not know so when we come back we're going to continue to add feathers and all kinds of things to our birdie birds As I paint her, I'm definitely going to want her to be not as bright of a blue as her companion. And in that, I'm going to take out my ultramarine blue and a little of my burnt sienna because that makes a blue gray desaturated. So again, we're using color and I've got my number uh, four round. We're going to use color to help create the variants that we're looking for. I can add some white into it there. And I'm going to just take my number four and make sure that I'm good here and can come into darker blue gray as I come down. That's what we've got going on here. And, and this is just kind of down a little bit into the wing. And then we do have on this bottom wing a few little feathers that uh, come in this kind of gray that we sort of see. But when you see the other ones layer over, it's going to be interesting because they're a little different. Now I'm going to get into my blue blue. I haven't even rinsed out though. Because there is a bluer underpinning on this wing. And a couple feathers that come like that. And definitely we've got a bluer tail situation going on. And then I'm going to not rinse out and just get into my black. And paint the wing that goes over the back wing here. Amazing, right? So that's just getting that beginning in. Let's work on the orange. A little of my cad red, a little of my cad yellow. Under the wing, come in with a nice little bunch of color. Maybe a little more yellow and white. Right there, a little bit of lighter color. And 
definitely lighter up around the chest and back into the yellow orange under the chin and then more into the red orange if you can even get into the red here to deepen it that fun looks really nice okay so we're going to want her to dry here and we can go do the same thing to him and then there'll be one finishing layer on her and one finishing layer on him but let's get over to him and kind of do a similar thing but represent his unique color patterns and his little birdiness on him his colors are a little more saturated they're a little brighter I'm going to go ahead and take a little white into my uh, yellow orange and I'll still hit some of the lower part of him with that because sometimes belly feathers will be lighter that just is a thing that happens you don't always need the brightest colors on your belly feathers <laughs> you'll have to ask the birds I'm bringing a little of my uh, cad yellow over to my cad red and creating a brighter orange And that's pretty nice. I loved what we did around his face already. That was super happy making. Yeah. Now he is so much more blue. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue with a smidge of white so we can kind of see it. I'm just coming back. Making sure his blue blueness is, is respected. his little tail now I'm going to do some of the gray feathers but I'll mix my ultramarine and phthalo blue and burnt sienna into it and that's just to give me some mid-tone I'm going to bring just a few little thinking about it feathers down the wing and then next to it, a few little thinking about a feathers down the wing. And then a little more into the black. A little bit on the other side. And I might come into the blue and just make sure that this line is good. This line is good, that line is good, all the lines are good. And a little bit on the tail there. Okay, so we're going to let him dry and we're going to go over and do the finishing details on the girl birdie. So we're going to want to do some loose stuff some details and that's how it's going to pull the bird all together the first thing that i'm going to want to get is i'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue believe it or not my phthalo green together even a smidge of my my yellow i'm going to just make the brightest turquoise and i'll reveal it with white and i'm going to come here And brush a little bit of that there and a little bit there it's just it's just a smidge she's just got a smidge of the turquoise I'm gonna go back into my blue come here and make sure that I'm layering over coming in there I've got my blue black again And then into my gray, which was my ultramarine, and my burnt sienna for the blue gray. And a little bit of white. Kind of see it there. Maybe a little more white. All right. 
So she's there. The finishing bit with her is that I'm going to take a little bit of my white paint into my gray feather color. This is my fluid white and my monogram liner. I'm going to make sure that we just kind of talk about a little feather tucked in there. And then perhaps a little feather tucked in here. Just little, little edgies. These are just the edges of the feathers. You don't have to get everything. A little bit lighter for where the turquoise is. Isn't that extraordinary? And then we know we've got a few little feathers here at the edge of the tail. And that and that. Look at that. That's her. Let's look at her. She looks good. She looks good. So yeah. She's shaking a tail feather. You gotta you gotta she looked good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's finish him out a little bit and give him his little trim and then we're going to get onto our flowers, which is the whole point of the painting, right? Right? Yep. Right? Yep. <laughs> okay. I can't believe it's 29. All right, we got this. So we're going to give him just a little shine, a little moment, a little zhuzh. I'm going to come over to the turquoise that I made earlier. And get a bit of it. Kind of tap a little on the back of his head with my round brush. This is my number four round, and I'm just giving him a little reflection. Maybe a little little sunlight's hitting him there. You know, I can always blend it in. So I'm always good. Do a little white over here, so we have some some control over the brightness of our paint. Definitely got a bright blue spot in there. Little feathers on the front. You can see I'm just using the brush to help me kind of capture that feeling, right? He's so blue. And that's what we want. We want blue. We want him to feel blue. Maybe a little burnt sienna and a, a little bit of white for that slightly grayer feather coming down. And then back into the blue. A little white in that blue coming up. And a little highlight on the tail. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm maybe going to take just a little of my yellow over to my red and get kind of a bright orange. We can add some white to it and just make sure that the little chest area is a little bit light. Just because I will like that, I feel like he should have some light. Rinse out and get the same fluid over to my gray paint. And kind of all that same little uh, process again, right? So we're going to go, well, there's a little feather right there. 
we can kind of edge it. Maybe there's another little one right here. Little, little edged feathers. Uh, this one could come down here. Have a little friend there. The line's coming back to the feathers there, kind of tucking in on the wings. You know, over here there might be a little bit edging. Edging happens. Working a little bit of edging down. I might come also on top of his head and just add a little, uh, you know, I'm kind of getting off here, but I might add a little white hair as a reflection. Because he's a little shinier. A little bit at the front of his head just to give him a little zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh. And there's a little bit of edging here. There we go. It's not, it's not a big thing, you know, it's just a little bit of hinting that something could be going on. All right, let's look at our birdies. Is he neat? He might use a little bit of highlight on his little foot. I could see that. But other than that, they're good guys. They look yeah. like the birds that they are. In, I think, I feel like very good in natural positions for where they are in the world. And I think having gesture in birds and motion in birds um, in their body it adds to the fun of painting them. It's a good time to get clean water, so let's do that. Come back and start painting the natural scenery around said birds. I definitely want to give some more highlighting and uh, dimensionality to the branch. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow and uh, orange over and I might get some of my brown kind of going over into it. Get a, almost a yellow ochre. And I just want to make sure that on this branch, and I'm taking my number four round, I kind of dry brush a barky little highlight. You guys can see it. it's a barky little highlight. Barky. Uh, maybe up here as well on this upper branch just a I know I know a lot of stuff is going to be down there covering it but I just want to have a barky little highlight yeah and I'm just barely running the brush on here it doesn't have a lot of water in it so that texture that effect really is because the brush is dry and canvas is rough and my pressure is light so it makes the effect makes the effect. It's a dry brushy effect. That looks pretty good. All right. While we're here, I'm going to put in some very light green leaves a couple of places in the beginnings of maybe some petals. We're going to begin the layering up. Let's take our yellow and put a little brown into it and then a smidge of green. And I'm going to and make some little diamond leaf strokes. These are the beginnings, right? Because we will have layers here. Many layers. Many, many layers on this lovely little branch. I'm going to uh add a leaf here and here might go ahead and make a darker green with a little burn sienna and the other green a little burn sienna the other green you can come up and maybe talk a few about that a little bit about some of these back into the yellow
Sometimes I'll grab the darker green. You can see if it's there, the light green and the darker green, I can kind of jump between them mm. and add them in. Just little bits of things here and there. All right, let's call that a step, shall we? Okay. Call a step. Now we're going to put in some flowers, very similar to the leaves we've just been doing. I'm going to take my Cad Red and my Quin Magenta and kind of work those together. More to the magenta. And the cad red, and I'm gonna get a smidge of white involved in that. So little, it's pink, but it's like a deep pink. And let's say some of these little blooms are down there. I'm gonna pull a little stroke on the toe. Just the beginnings of something. Look, I'm even probably not going to be able to keep my green leaf. Hmm. I do want to keep my tail, but I may have to put at least one petal over it just to make it seem reasonable. Pull back a few little petals there. Now she's got some of her feet hidden, so let's make a I'm gonna make a little tiny round bulb or little bud. Maybe another little bud. A little more white into the mix. I'm gonna curve. Make kind of an open flower. We've been doing this. So watch me do this. If you're not sure how to do this, let's do another one. So the stroke will curve, and that's a petal of a flower. And that one's a little open. And then if I want to kind of close it, I can come back with a little bit of a dark petal. They're just little curved strokes that join together and make the beginnings of flowers. Now, for these to be flowers, We'll need to have all kinds of value, light and dark. They have lots of value. They'll need to have it. They're very valuable. You can come here sometimes more into the magenta. I'll curl the strokes. I did a blue bird. Right now they're just kind of smudges. I know they're smudges. <laughs> That's why we painted flowers for a month. <laughs> because you have to know when it's a smudge and when it's a flower. This is how you find out. Okay. I'm watching. You're wa Well, you're stuck. John's stuck. He can't go anywhere, so he has to watch. But let's make sure we've got some nice flowers up here as well. I like watching. Right. It's very relaxing. Sometimes I do paint out my leaves. Sometimes they just end up being a pop of green somewhere. And that's okay. I painted out my stem because I'm going to have so many flowers here. I'm going to have to. All right. This is literally, this crazy mess is where you begin. Now, I personally would dry. That's what I would do. 
but you've got to figure out where you're at in this. I'm going to dry. So we need to add some more light colors to this. I'm going to smidge a little of my yellow over here. And I'm going to bring a lot of white. Making a very light pink. And we're going to come in and add. Some light pink petals. To the dark pink we've kind of already got going. All right, so we're creating little dimensionalities, aren't we? Yeah. So I'm going to continue on. Maybe add a little highlight to that. Put some little light petals here. Maybe this flower itself, the whole flower starts light. Some of them will be. You can get a lighter pink here, but it's not as light as maybe the pink I've been putting down. Right, it's just about creating that kind of dimensionality in the pink, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. I like the layers of pink. Oh, we've just so many. We haven't even really gotten into it yet because we have another layer that we're going to do still wet. You can see I just come and curve these strokes. These are like little commas. Sometimes the, the petals are a little closed and sometimes they're very open. I'm rinse out a little bit because I just want to offload a little bit of pink, but I'm going to bring a lot more white over here. And this is almost going to be a white pink. This is just a white tinted with pink. So we're adding these lighter petals in to the mix, making these little blooms just more. Those just become more. And always get back into a pink if you're like, oh, you need a little more pink. Mm. So you're never stuck. It it adds complexity to the image. It adds complexity. Right, that's what you're doing. You're adding a little complexity to everything that's going on here. Now I am going to dry this. And we're going to come back and add a few more leaves. So we're going to add a little more greenery. I'm going to take my yellow, a little of my brown again, right? Kind of creating that little olive and getting a little phthalo green into it. Pretty light. And coming back and making sure that even the flowers have a little bit of greenery coming up over them and in them. We're weaving, right? I can bring a little of my burned sienna and my thalo green down to give myself a slightly darker green for when I need it. And I'm going to tuck here and there. Little leaves, sometimes lighter, sometimes darker. But that creates another layer. It really does. Of depth that we're really contending with. Over here and even be a little more.
I like to just pull those out a little bit. Look at that. So nice. It's just a nice little fun kind of moment. Now, the other thing we can do is we can take a little bit of this green yellow and maybe come over into our orange a bit. You can also pop in a couple of places, maybe little centers. Yeah. just find a couple flowers that are open maybe i make that one kind of open and facing me same here so see how that that implies where the face of the flower is so if i put a little bit there looks like the flower is open that way Maybe a little highlight in some of them. So now we have some flowers that are sort of open different directions, aren't they? Yeah. You know, and then a thing I think I might do is I might grab some white, and perhaps some yellow. And add little finishing marks to some of the more defined flowers to help them. Little highlights. Just an extra little zhuzh. You can always come back, you know, and highlight something. Well, I think you could be more Up here even. You can bring it in more pink if you think it needs more pink. But sometimes it's nice to have some very bright petals in the world just to give that twinkling in a tree feeling. Right? Because that's what it is. It's twinkling in a tree. Look at them. I think this is really wonderful. I'm actually pretty happy with this little piece. It really is. You Beautiful. know, I think that... You know, a, a lot of you guys were like, you really were enjoying the animals in acrylic April this year, along with the flowers. And there certainly was like a lot of requests for birds, just like I got a lot of inbox messages. So hopefully that was true because <laughs> this ended up being your surprise day 29. I'm going to go ahead and sign this. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next. Which brush are you using there to sign? I'm going to use the monogram liner. That's your, you like the sign with that you one. You know, I, I liked my old monogram liner, like the most, um, and I'm going to continue to search for a monogram liner, but I will always have a monogram liner in my book, in my little brush bucket. It's a useful little tool. It is a useful little tool. And at some point after I test them all, I will give a review. The best monogram liners. Hmm. Today is a weird signature day. There we go. We got it in there. Here it goes. It's weird, but it's in. And I don't ever have to worry about Providence because it's like it's filmed. So <laughs> super easy to verify that I signed it. <laughs> As you we'll watch the right back. hot mess happen. Yeah. We'll be right back, right? Mm -hmm. Right back. So hopefully uh, by day 29, flowers are starting to feel at least better to you you're starting to understand more you maybe don't like every kind of flower or every element of it but you have more skills and information for flowers we've got the last of the acrylic april paintings tomorrow maybe you just came in because you love these two birds and you know what kind of bird they are and you're very, very much excited about this kind of bird if it's an orange bellied thrush you'll have to let me know in the comments <laughs> it was just really pretty the coloring on these guys it really is they're just, I just think they're super gorgeous. Um, So, like, it's so great to have you. Be sure, one way or the other, check that bell on my channel. If it doesn't have the little parentheses, um, you won't necessarily get notifications from YouTube. So make sure you hit it and ring it. Uh, the reminder for the video is not the same as subscribing, weirdly enough. Yeah. So that's the thing to know. Remember, we have text messages where I give you some uh, little picture hints of what's coming up now. I think that's what we switched to. Uh, and that's pretty good. 
We've got a lot of exciting paintings coming up. So definitely subscribe and comment. Let me know the kinds of things that you want to paint. I actually really do am listening to you guys and you really dictate uh, from Facebook to YouTube what I paint out here. So I do like the feedback. I really do. <sighs> Proud of you guys. Like I, I really am. This is big. It's huge. You did a painting. You did you did 29 of them. It's huge. Maybe you're on year four and you're about to be doing a 120 of them. You're like at one third, one, uh, one, uh, uh, 19. I'm so bad at math. <laughs> Wherever you are in that, I think it's wonderful that you're here and you're wonderful being you. Be sure to hit that, um, uh, what am I going to say next? I don't know. Subscribe, like, I comment, did that already and they know. Things. You guys know. Do the human things. Do the human things. Yeah. There's really nothing to do but congratulate yourself. Share it in group. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.